ZBrush and hard surface, one of those things that can be a little bit tricky, but today, guys, I am going to be showing you how to go from this, just a very basic sketch of a breastplate, into uh, this right here, the clean version of the element. I'm going to be showing you all of the process, right? I'm going to show you the techniques that I used to create this piece right here, or the start of this piece right here. And uh, I do believe that these tools and techniques are very, very useful, especially if you don't want to be jumping in and out of the software. So if you want to know how to create this very clean looking plates, let's go. Very well, my friends. So let's get into making this like very rough sketch of an armor into a nice piece. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create this like rough sketch that I have for my character. You probably have seen it running around in some of my stories there on Instagram. So what I'm going to do here is I want to extract all of the shape right here. And to do that, we're going to be using masks. Now, this is one of the steps that you need to be very careful about because as you can see, if we start grabbing on the like outer edge of this thing, we're gonna have a little bit of an issue. So ideally, you wanna grab only the flat area on the front of the armor. You can see that you have some sectional lines that I drew for the design of this uh, chest plate or this breastplate, and uh, we actually don't care about those just yet. We're gonna use them as a guide later on, but right now we only need the general shape right here. Try to clean your edges as much as possible. This is again one of the important parts of the of the process of this um, of this cleanup effect. And this is something that you would normally do, or there's another way to do it, which is of course go into a software like Maya or Blender or even like 3D Code or Topogon and just create the retopology of the element. But I don't want to do that. It's it's a little bit time consuming. So once we have this, I'm gonna go to Subtool and we're gonna go to Extract. And the first little secret here is that you want to extract with zero thickness. This is very, very important. Hit accept. Let's isolate this so that we can see it, and this is what we get. So not bad for our first extraction, not bad for our first like acid right here. The next thing is we need to clean the edges a little bit. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The first one that I like to do is I actually like to go with my select lasso and get rid of some of like the very obvious uh, like errors that I made on the on the masking process. Now, once I pretty much like do that, the next thing, let me remove, there we go. The next thing is of course delete hidden. So we're gonna go here and say delete hidden. And we're gonna go all the way down to deformation to clean up the edges because it's very common to get these sort of like jaggedy edges on the elements. And we're gonna use either polish or polish crisp, crisp edges, whichever one you prefer. This is gonna clean them up a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's, it's gonna give you a nice result. Now, don't worry too much about this because the real way in which we're gonna be cleaning this is of course with C remesher. So I'm just gonna click C remesher and immediately we're gonna get a more organized sort of like topology, as you can see right here. It's not perfect, but it's getting there. Now, one of the secrets about C remesher is that you don't wanna work with as high of a resolution as you normally get by default. So I'm gonna go a little bit lower to like 2.5. I'm gonna C remesh, and then I'm gonna click on this option that says half, and I'm gonna C remesh again. And as you can see, with each C remeshing, I'm gonna get a very sort of like low poly version of the whole thing. This right here is perfect, perfect, perfect. And why is this perfect? Because of two reasons. First of all, on the corners right here, we don't have a loop. We actually have a, a sharp corner. And this will give me a, a nicer, more like crisp looking edge than having an edge loop that continues all the other way around. I'm gonna do the same thing here, just like move things around. We do have a edge loop right there. And if you want, one of the things that you can do is of course, just like move a couple of these points and generate a, a nicer uh, border. And uh, yeah, and we got this underlying or under like edge on the bottom part right there. So this right here is a perfectly workable topology. Now, if you're like super, super like, um, like precise about your topology, you're like a perfectionist. Yes, there are things that can be improved, like this loops right here. There's definitely a couple of things. But to be honest, especially if you have a character that's gonna have this big breastplate and he's never gonna like bend down into like a C shape, he's always gonna be moving very, very tanky like, then this is perfectly fine, perfectly workable. And I would even say like the topology resolution is is really nice as well. So once we have this, the next thing we need to do is we need to add some thickness. So again, I'm gonna go to geometry, dynamics of the vision, dynamic. And I'm gonna remove the dynamic subdivision for now. I don't want any smooth subdivision. I just want thickness. When you add thickness, thickness by default is gonna add thickness to both sides of the elements. So it's gonna it's gonna grab your base plane. It's gonna push some thickness up and some thickness down. By the way, all of these things I'm talking about, uh, like the tools here inside of ZBrush. If you are new to ZBrush and would you wanna like learn a little bit more about the software, I got some free lessons and a premium course down here in the comments that you can check out. It's like 20 hours of, of content so that you can create your own characters, and we cover a lot of these tools as well. So over here, I'm gonna change the offset to the back. Okay, this is very important. I just want the offset to be 
going back. Why is this? Well, because if you remember, we grabbed the mask from the front part of the of the breastplate. So we want to create the depth of that breastplate and we don't want to push this and make it like way, way thicker than it should be. Now you can see we have a couple of like a weird edges or weird well, like things right there. That's fine. That's very, very easy to, to fix. I'm going to show you in just a second. So I'm just going to hit here, apply. So now I'm just going to press control, click on this thing and then control and drag. And then I'm going to hide this guy's. Oh, oh, is that part of the, oh, that's horrible. I thought it was like separated. Oh, it is separated, but it's the same. For some reason, it's the same polygroup. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do an auto groups option. And that should now be its own sort of like polygroup. There we go. Same of those. Or let's just let's just grab this one right here. There we go. And I'm just gonna say delete hidden. I mean we did we do lose the polygroups, but it's very easy to recover them. If we go back to C modeler, we can just grab this edge right here and say polygroup. And that's gonna polygroup the whole edge right there. And then we can hide that, invert it, and say other groups again. And now we got, again, the back and the front as a separate polygroups. So now if we turn on dynamic subdivision again, without uh, thickness, of course, and we turn on a couple of subdivision levels, we are going to get the very nice and smooth effect. But we get this sort of like rounded corners, which suck, right? So in order to get a sharp look, again, with C Modeler, we're going to be using this insert edge, which is pretty much like traditional poly modeling. And this is a question that I get often about like poly modeling. Like, do you need to know about poly modeling if you know how to sculpt? And the answer is yes, because if you know the basics of poly modeling, support edges, bevels, things like that, all of this becomes way, way easier as well. So make sure that we have a symmetry turn on. Yeah, okay. So we're going to add one right there and look at how sharp and nice that corner becomes. Same thing over here. So one right there on the very border. We're going to add one right here and one right here. And as you can see, that gives us a very, very nice clean look over the whole thing. Now, I'm going to disable dynamic subdivision because as you can see, there are a couple of like little bumps here and there. You can actually smooth them out. If you want like a super, super like nice effect, but I'm going to show you a very cool effect that, that I like. I'm going to hit apply. And now this is like real subdivision. Like we've created the subdivision for the element. We actually have the subdivision levels here. And this is another like very cool thing about this process. You already have your high poly. You don't need to go back to Dynamesh. You already have your low poly, sorry. You already have your low poly. And we can now work on the high poly to generate all of the details. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to go to Train Dynamic and change my alpha to around alpha. And I like to just give like small little hits to several like different parts. And as you can see, we're gonna start getting this sort of like hammered effect, like hammered metal effect. So if you can imagine like a Dorbin um, blacksmith creating this breastplate and he's just like hammering and hammering and hammering, well, this is how you how you get it. Cool. Let me very quickly, because I don't want to spoil the character just yet. I, I get it. I've spoiled it a little bit in a couple of videos, but I don't want to like have it completely there on out in the world just yet. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna wait until the course releases. But let me bring in the upper part of the breastplate so that we can see how this fits. And there we go. This is the the upper part again. This is our like a, a base mesh or, or block mesh that we have, and this is what we have. And look at that. That looks really good. As you can see, things are overlapping very nicely. We don't get any sort of like empty spaces. And the only thing that I might want to do is I find this sort of like corners a little bit uh, like not ideal. So I'm just going to use my move brush and overlay, over, overlap them there on the inside so we get a nicer curve for the arm of our character. And look at how clean this looks compared to the to the old like little thing that we had right here. It was just like the very basic rough sketch. This looks way, way, way better. Now, we're still going to go back here and we're going to do a couple of extra changes. As you can see, this is meant to be a sort of like paneling effect. I wanted to create this sort of like paneling for the full, whole thing. So this one that I've created is the first layer, which represents this layer right here. And then on top of this layer, we're going to have first this layer and then this layer. So it's three layers of like very thin like metals that are going to create these sort of like... Uh, the depth that we're looking for. So let's go uh, right here. This is fine. And first, let's extract again. But now we're going to extract this piece right here. OK, so all of this piece right here. Now, why am I extracting again and not just grabbing it from the from the previous one if we already have a clean one? And the answer is the topology might have changed or we might want a slightly different change in topology like this angles that I have right here. And it's not going to be as clean. And besides, we can have multiple layers. Like that's another thing that people think about uh, uh, games and characters. You don't have to model everything from a single mesh. It's one of the most common errors. One of the, actually, whenever I'm teaching Maya, 
um, one of the first exercises, I call it um, simple to complex, which is model a lot of simple elements and combine them into a single object to make a complex object. Back in the day, we used to do like a little uh, like alarm clock, like a, like a traditional um, just like clock. And then later on, I started doing uh, Thor's hammer. So if you've if you've gra if you've grabbed any of my Maya's uh, like course, you, you're gonna do a, a Thor's hammer in the first few lessons, so that you understand that like you can have a very complex object made out of very simple elements, and you don't always need to have it uh, be completely modeled from a single piece. There we go. So we got this again. We are extracting at zero uh, thickness. There we go. Look at that. Super clean. Let's go to serial mesh. I actually like the edges right now, so we're just gonna go directly to serial mesh, go to half, and we're just gonna start cleaning this up. Ideally, as we clean things up, you can see that the corners are gonna start changing, but here, we do need to be a little bit careful about the topology, because as you can see, one thing that is happening is that we are getting a loop, and we've mentioned this before, loops are not always the, like, the best thing for us, depending on how we want certain things to be. So in this case, since I want a very like clean cut on the very like border of the object, we need to modify this right here. And again, fairly simple to do with Simulator. We just delete this edge loop or this polygon right there. And then we go back to our move brush. We push this line a little bit up like that. And then again with Simulator, we just go to edge and we extrude. So we're gonna extrude this edge down. As you can see, all the snaps, which is great. And there we go. So with that, we pretty much create or fix the um, the geometry that we're looking for in this case. So we have a very clean, sort of like sharp border when we create the whole thing. So that border right there goes nicely all the way over here. That's fine. But then over here, right? Like if you remember, we had this uh, cut right here and we had another cut like right around here. So this is what we need to fix. Again, see modeler, we delete this polys. Actually, uh, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, because other, I mean, it it's, shouldn't be that much of an issue. Actually, let me keep this corner. I want to show you how to fix this corner right here, but we're going to like make this a little bit better right there. Perfect. Let's grab our move brush again and just fix the, the angle, right? Like we want to make sure that the angle of our, of our element is looking as, as nice as possible. There we go. So here, again, I'm not too worried about it. If we want a sharp edge, we just need to add a couple of edge loops. Yes, we're going to get a pinch, but I'm going to show you how to, how to fix that. And then over here, again, very importantly, we want to delete this one. And then this is going to extrude this out like this. There we go. Very important to go to your move brush and just clean some of the borders a little bit. And now that we have this, we again go to um, dynamic subdivision. We enable it, no subdivision first. We're gonna do thickness. And in this case, we want the thickness to go on the other way because we already have the, the depth going in. So this is the depth uh, going out. Now we don't want this to be like super, super, super intense, but we just wanna give it a little bit more. Actually, let me get out of dynamic solo and let's bring, there we go. So that we can see like the actual, um, the actual thickness that we want. And again, it's not too much. Like at the end, we want to get close to this one, but not exactly the same uh, distance. So keep that in mind. So I would say right around there is good. Now you can see some of these edges are not like matching perfectly. This is again where the move brush is great. And this is great because we're, we're already in this sort of like pre preview of the, of the dynamic subdivision, even though we have not created dynamic subdivision. I personally like when things are not perfect. I've mentioned this before. One of the, the, like the main issues with 3D is that we often get very perfect results with like um, all of the babbles and extrudes and things like that. So whenever I get a little bit of weird overlaps or weird effects, I find like that gives a little bit more of a realistic look because especially like in medieval times, you would not expect to have like super high-tech machinery that would give you perfect, uh, perfect like constructions all the time. Now, this is of course a little bit too much right here. So we, we do need to go a little bit out there to create like the two sort of like borders. But once we add a little bit of smooth, that's also gonna be, be fixed a little bit. Try not to smooth the, the borders. I did that right there and I kind of like messed it up. So try not to, to smooth the borders too much. There we go. 
and check everywhere. It's very, very important. The, the, there's a very famous quote, right? The devils and the details. So you want to make sure that all of your details are as clean as possible when making this construction so that when we like finalize this and we add all of the support edges and stuff like that, it looks as clean and as tight as possible. This is, uh, I did a short not, not too long ago talking about quality and time. And it's funny, shorts, shorts are, I, I love doing shorts. It's, it's a very fun uh, sort of like medium to convey information and it's very enjoyable, very entertaining. But the problem is that since you only have one minute, there's a lot of context that gets lost. So I did a short again not too long ago about art and how, how you need to learn like the fundamentals of art and you, you need to, to not call it your style. And there were some comments like, oh, but art can be anything. It's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about production art, right? Like entertainment art, not just like expression art. So that's the kind of stuff that's uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to convey on the, on the short format. And again, talking about the short format, there was another one I did where I talked about time. Like this stuff takes time. <laughs> you cannot expect to do this sort of elements uh, like very, very quickly. So there we go. Now I don't want to have this super like long curvatures. Actually, this was, I, I believe this was supposed to be a, a square rather than, um, than a curve. I'm not against the curve now though. I think it looks interesting. It does, uh, let's, let's sharpen this up a little bit here. So I'm gonna keep, there we go. Yeah, I think the, the sharper effect looks a little bit better. Cool. So now we hit apply, of course. We turn on dynamic again, no thickness now, and we're gonna add two subdivisions. And this is where, again, using CModeler, we're gonna go back to our uh, insert uh, edge loop. Uh, let's make this very small. I need to go to the edge. There we go, insert, one on the bottom, one on the top, one on this corner. See, that, that matches the corner a lot better. Here's where, where things are gonna get a little bit tricky. We're gonna have one right there. We're gonna have down here, another one. This one's gonna be fairly easy. And then this one is the one that I was talking about. So I'm gonna add it right here to, to generate the pinch. And I'm also gonna add one right there. Again, to generate this sort of like, like intense loop right there. Remember, this is the high poly, right? So the low poly, we can delete those edges and that's fine. So now with this, the cool thing is I can just uh, go into, again, Trim Dynamic. I'm going to hit Apply, of course. I'm going to give it one more division and just flatten that out. So that little pinch that we see, we just start relaxing it a little bit. And no one's going to know that there's a, a weird pinch right there. So yeah, that's the second part of the thing. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with, uh, with all of the details. There's two more that I'm missing. So if we go very quickly to this guy right here, I'm missing this one right here, and I want to add another sort of like secondary one right here to complete the sort of like uh, pattern that I'm thinking of. And so yeah, let me do it real quick and I'll show you the final result. And that's it, my friends. As you can see, once you have all of this ready, you are gonna have a very clean mesh. You can dynamesh them if you want. You can play it with polygroups. You can add the exact same technique to get this like border that I created for the, for the upper part of the element. But in this case, I'm actually gonna leave it like this because once we get into, go into texturing, I'm gonna be adding all of this like very nice details and, and cuts all around the, the surface of the element. So if you like this video, please let me know here in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. We're missing a lot of subscribers. I know you're watching the videos and not subscribing really helps the channel. And uh, don't forget to watch us today, or not today, <laughs> this week on Friday when we're going to be going live on Twitch and here on YouTube as well. So that's it, my friends. I hope this little technique has been helpful to you. And if you want to check more advanced tips and techniques about ZBrush, make sure to check the full course down here on the description. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.